Bob Klingenquist, who is the official. Here comes Bob. I knew Bob when I was coaching uh, the city leagues, and I didn't realize you were also a very good athlete, too. Maybe I'm going to treat you different or something. Well, you did a little digging there, I think. I want you to know that in 50 years of umpiring, I never had to get rid of a coach, eject a high school coach. Never. Me out five times. <laughs> no, even Bobby Hart survived. Uh, but the reason for this really is that the high school coaches are school-based coaches. They knew what they were doing, no problem. That has changed now because high school coaches are sometimes hired off the street. And so I really thank all of you guys who coached. I see Len Anderson, Bobby Hart, and others here. Uh, and this is my 50th year. I still work a high school, a full schedule, and a summer schedule. So thanks again to the coaches here. Well, you played it. You played baseball. Come on, you were a good baseball player. Western Michigan, you guys went to the College World Series, fourth in the nation, pretty good. Well, I was lucky. Tony Lucadella was a scout for the Chicago Cubs. He uh, picked me to be the cornerstone player for a team called the Niles Cubs, an independent team out of Niles, Michigan, for three years. He took me into Wrigley Field in the summer of uh, 51, and the Cubs offered me a LA contract, a AAA contract with a bonus. That was hard to turn down. But uh, the next summer I played in the College World Series, and uh, you have to remember, the College World Series is set up differently now than it was then. Back then, there were eight regions. If you won your region, you went to Omaha. And you had to win the Big Ten, the whole section of the country, uh, the Mid-America Conference, and so on. Now, you can see that teams in the South and Southwest dominate the World Series because it's based on other things than the way the regions are set up. So now, you were a good athlete, a good baseball player. All of a sudden, you come, you come out to Tucson and you, did, you turned out a coaching job and you just wanted to be an umpire, huh? I came to Tucson uh, during spring break. I had been the highest paid baseball coach in Michigan. Think of this. In 1962 and 63, as a high school baseball coach, I was paid $3,000 just to coach high school baseball. I, that was pretty, pretty high amount of money in addition to the teaching salary. I came here uh, to get out of coaching, came here during the spring term. The superintendent at Sunnyside, Herrera, offered me the head baseball job at Sunnyside. I went to Tucson High to teach instead. Andy Tolson hired me without knowing any of my athletic background. I'm very proud of that. When Jim Wing, in the spring, went to Palo Verde as a head baseball coach at Palo Verde, Andy Tolson asked me to take over his JV job that he left. On the way home, I stopped by Palo Verde to talk to Jim I got halfway back, went home and told my wife, no, I'm done coaching for 10 cents an hour. Uh, you know, high school coaching is a thankless job money-wise. And, uh, you know, I started umpiring. Well, I had umpired in Michigan, but uh, yeah, I decided I wanted to umpire. Now, Frank Santa, did he help you out some? Oh, Frank, Frank was the high school commissioner. He did all the assigning of umpires, and I have in my folder here today about a 15-page resume. You had to jump the hoops. You came into town as a high school official. He made me work JV games and freshman games and not even high school varsity games for three years. But you know what he did? He hired me, and I worked U of A games at the U of A, but he wouldn't, let, wouldn't assign me high school games. <laughs> but I worked a full schedule of U of A games, uh, and that lasted for uh, oh, 20 years of uh, college uh, and junior college games. You've coached spring training games too, I believe, right? Well, remember when the Indians were here, 
They used to send one major league umpire. So local umpires had a chance to work a lot of games. And then twice, the major league umpires were on strike during the spring. So I worked a full schedule. And when the umpires went on strike one year at the end of the season, I was asked to put together a team of umpires to work out the month of September and October. I'm glad I declined. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's it like to umpire a major league game when you're in your high school and you also got the hitters up there, they're probably complaining, the pitchers are complaining? The one thing I learned about spring training baseball, when Willie McCovey comes to the plate, you never call him out on strikes. <laughs> right? It's entertainment. The people come to see Willie McCovey hit the ball. And so I learned uh, the ball could be right here. It's going to be a ball. And uh, another thing you learned about spring training, which I didn't realize, you had new players coming in right out of college. They're trying to make a team in spring training. And I had one second baseman right out of college. I called out on strikes three times. That's like putting a nail in his coffin. You realize that you really hurt some of these guys. Then you have those guys that are trying to hold on to get to retirement. They have been a bench player maybe for five years, six years. They're trying to get full retirement. And they're really trying to scramble to make the squad one more year. So, you know, there's a lot going on. In a spring training game, it's entertainment. It's people trying to make the club. It's those that are just trying to get in shape. So, uh, you know, you realize pretty fast that uh, it's just not all fun and games to go out and umpire. You like to do one more question here. You know, you watch a game on TV, they have that box in the strike zone. You like that? No. <laughs> <laughs> that, that box on television, I can, first of all, the strike zone is from the shoulders to the knees. You know where the knee is? It's the bottom of the knee. The baseball is two and a half inches. The plate is 17 inches. Add 17 and five. That's the strike zone this way. The strike zone, it says, is from the shoulders to the knees. Well, try and measure that out and see where it comes. And uh, no, the, the strike zone, <clears throat> that picture they show you on TV of where it's going and where it's going. My strike zone is the same as yours on TV. That doesn't work. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> this is the only man I ever threw out of a game. <laughs> I remember that too. <laughs> Next up is Chuck Levetter. Coach. Good years there at Tucson. Yeah, we had some great years, and I had the opportunity to play with my brother when he was a senior and I was a sophomore, and we got to get beat by Phoenix Union at that time. You know, they won 78 straight or something like that, but it was a lot of fun. So you go to Eastern Arizona, play there. How many JCs were there around then in Arizona? Oh, there was like four, <laughs> four or five, and, uh, and I coached baseball a little bit down there, and I was telling you, we beat Brock, uh, and he got so mad, he put everybody in the van and didn't shower and went back to Mesa. Well, you know, I noticed on there, because you played basketball at Houston High, you played basketball at Eastern Arizona, you played basketball at Bruce Larson at the U of A, you go to Eastern, you become a baseball coach. Well, <laughs> they didn't think much of the baseball program at that time, and I was hired as assistant basketball coach and be the head baseball coach, and I watched Joel coach there at Safford. Mm -hmm. So you're a long time now, you're a long time coach, basketball coach, and also these Eastern Arizona with some great teams. Yeah, we had some great years. Uh, we had some ups and downs, and you know, when you're doing really well, people come over and shake your hand, and when you're doing bad, they walk across the street, pretend they don't see you. But it's gotta be tough, I mean, recruiting Eastern Arizona. Well, it was at that time, when you didn't have much money and scholarships where they have now, and, uh, but we, you know, went out throughout the country and got some great players, and that's what makes you a coach. Well, yeah, 1995, you were 32-0. Yeah, it was a, 
a magical year. Uh, we should have lost some games somewhere in there. Uh, we had a, a guard out of Annapolis named Jody Beck. He was an All-American, and uh, uh, we were at Mesa, and they were defending the out-of-bound play, and he threw the ball against the guys back and took the ball and scored, and we won the game. So, you know, you had a lot of luck and good players. And also, at the same time, you're coaching the, the women's team. Well, yeah, we... <laughs> We, just, we did the boys and girls at that time, and uh, that was a lot of fun. We had some outstanding young ladies from uh, CDO at that time, and uh, they were good players, the girls. Well, it seemed like you wanted to be a basketball coach, because you, after your years of, with Bruce Larson, you became an assistant coach at the U of A. No, I was a graduate, undergraduate assistant uh, for Bruce, and we used to think he had basketball down to science at that time. Uh, we won a lot of games, and look at our talent, I didn't know if we were that great, but he put it all together. Did you go from, from the U of A to Eastern Arizona or someplace in between? No, yeah, I went from the, the U of A to, uh, to Eastern. Uh, he said, there's a couple jobs out here, go interview, and then they called me up and they said, hey, hold on, don't do anything, and that's when I was hired at Eastern Arizona. So a very good run there, and now did you play with your brother at all? I mean, when you were in high school and all that, or on the same team? Or? No, uh, well, he was. I was a sophomore, and uh, uh, we both played under, you know, Morales, and he didn't get along with Morales, because uh, <laughs> uh, I know we'd run sprints or something, and he'd turn around, and run backwards, and beat everybody, and then you know we were running, and so uh, I got the opportunity to play. <laughs> <laughs> so now you do camps and all that. You're pretty, you're still fairly active. Well, no, I'm retired. Uh, We've been retired for about uh, what, 10 years now. Don't you do any camps at all? Or? Uh, not anymore. Uh, we used to go to Mexico a whole bunch with Larson and uh, all over Mexico. And that was uh, work for the Nike camps. And boy, that was great. And then all the camps we had up there in Eastern Arizona every summer was uh, tremendous. And then even on the, uh, the Indian Reservation, we'd do that. How did you like living up there? Well, uh, great. It was a, you know, a small surrounding. You're at Mount Graham. and the telescope and uh, uh, Wilcox on this side, and it was uh, two hours away from Tucson. So, uh, you know, you throw your uh, laundry in the bag and come home to mother. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you.